What's up guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be recreating this infinite nebula effect that you see in here. It's a really cool effect. It's actually not too hard to recreate. Uh, we're going to be using the Cycles render engine for this just because Cycles handles volumetrics and path tracing a little bit. Well, a lot better actually. A lot better than Eevee at the detriment to longer render times. But it's going to be worth it because you're going to get this uh, really cool render. This design tutorial was actually requested by one of my patrons. So yeah, thank you for everyone who's supported me uh, through there. It really means a lot to me. If you're not aware of my Patreon, it comes with lots of exclusive benefits like instant access to all project files for my tutorials, along with project files for all of my weekly VJ loops. And if you don't want to subscribe, obviously, to like a monthly service like that, and you like some of the work that I put out, you can actually purchase them individually on my website, which I'll be linking in the description. Purchase of one of my renders on my website always comes with a Blender project file. So if you see something that you like on there and you want to know how it's made, feel free to check that out. That's nebmotion.co.uk. Anyway, enough of that. On with the tutorial. So once you've got Blender open, we're just going to delete everything. So hit A and then X and delete. First thing I'd like to do is set my frame rate to 30 frames per second. Uh, so we've got a nice uh, smooth playback. We're going to up the end frame to 300. So we've got a 10 second animation. The entire scene is created using volumetrics and procedural shading. So we're going to hit shift A, add a mesh, and we're going to add a UV sphere. Just right click that, shade smooth. We're going to change the render engine to cycles, and we're going to change the device to GPU compute so we can utilize our fancy GPUs uh, <laughs> to speed things up a bit. Next step, we're just gonna scale this sphere up. We're gonna hit S16. We give us a nice sort of space to work with because we're gonna be popping the camera inside the sphere uh, because like I said earlier, uh, the, the whole scene is just volumetrics. Don't know what volumetrics are. I suggest you just do a quick Google search or YouTube search and find a video that goes a bit more in depth because I'm not really gonna be covering all the ins and outs of it. I'm just gonna be showing you how to recreate the effect that I've made in the render. So let's hit Z and A and go into render modes so we can start shading this scene. Uh, we're going to change the world settings. So go over here. Don't worry if you don't see this. This is just an add-on that I've bought. And you're not going to have that unless, of course, you bought that add-on. We're going to change the surface color to black because it's going to be a sort of spacey scene. And now all we got to do is just start actually shading the sphere. So come over here to the top right of your uh, 3D viewport. Your cursor should change into a little cross. Click on that and just drag it in. We're going to create a new window. Change the editor type to shader editor. Hit N on your keyboard. That's going to get rid of that menu there. We don't need any of that. Hit plus to create a new material. By default, Blender gives you the principal BSDF shader, but we don't need that. We're going to be creating everything from scratch using a combination of some textures and math nodes. So we're going to hit shift A. We're going to add a shader and we're going to add an emission shader. Pop that there and plug it into the volume. Now, just a quick explain of the difference between a volume, volume metric shading and surface shading. Surface, like you probably understand, it just applies materials to the surface of the objects. With volumetric, it uses a system called voxels, which are sort of like, you can think of them like pixels, but three-dimensional pixels. So sort of like little cubes that sort of populate inside the object um, to, cr to create essentially shading information inside the object. So when you're using volumetrics, you're going to be basically using those for sort of like smoke textures or sort of like clouds and things like that, like in our case, nebulas. So anything that sort of has depth, that makes sense. That's just a sort of basic explanation of it. Like I said, if you want to if you want to learn more about it, I, I advise you to find a tutorial that goes more in depth because I'm not an expert on this sort of stuff. I just like to make cool designs. So we've got our emission shader plugged in. Shift A, add a texture, and we're going to add a gradient texture, and we're going to plug the FAC into the strength. You can kind of see this little thing's popped up here. It's not really doing much though, so hit Shift A and add a color ramp. Just pop that there. And now as you start bringing that in, you can see what's happening here. It's sort of bringing in a sort of gradient around the sphere. That's the difference between volume shading and surface shading. So if you have it plugged into the surface, you can't see past where that gradient is, but when you plug it into the volume, you can see it's kind of got depth to it. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like, sort of go in it and it's still got that you kind of see through it, if that makes sense. And the gradient sort of cuts through. Whereas when you have it on surface, you can't see past because it's just applying it on the surface. I don't know if that's making sense, but it gives it a bit of transparency. It's kind of a, what I'm getting at. But yeah, so we can crunch that in, but 
set it to spherical because I want I want the uh, gradient to go around the sphere just so I can sort of control I guess the sort of size and the sort of feather of the volumetrics so we can change that to spherical and you can see it's sort of not really done what I want and that's because of the mapping of the texture because we're going to be working in the shader editor editor you're going to want to have an add-on installed it comes a blender it's just not installed by default so first thing you want to do is go to edit preferences and go to add-ons here just make sure you got node wrangler installed just type in node wrangler just make sure that checkbox is checked uh, it's going to save us a lot of time working in there so with that add-on installed we're going to click on our gradient texture and we're going to hit Control t and that's going to create uh, these two node setups here all you got to do now is just swap the generated to objects so plug the object into the vector and now you can see as i orbit my camera around it's, it's all staying within the object and now I can use this to sort of control the feather of the volumetrics and you can use that to brighten the inside as well. We'll pop that about there and maybe have it around here I think is good. So that's that but I want to add a bit of uh, colour to this object because obviously we're, we're trying to make a nebula we want it to be nice and vibrant lots of colours sort of uh, poking through so we're going to hit shift A we're going to add a texture and we're going to add a noise texture. I'm just going to pop this here. I'm going to plug the fact into the color. And we're going to click on this color ramp here. Just hit Shift D so we duplicate it. And we're going to pop that in between. Click on this color ramp here. And just click on this plus button a few times so we add a few sliders. I think about five will do. Well, that's six. I can't even count. So we're going to just click on these and just add a bit of color. Don't worry too much about this. We're going to mess around with this a bit more. Just add some contrasting colors it really doesn't matter what you add because we're going to play with this a bit more later when, once we start playing with some of the other parameters we'll add one black and bring the black in the middle just because it will add a bit of sort of contrast between the uh the colors let's do that for now and we'll like i said we'll play around with this a bit more later now let's play around with this noise texture so we want to i think we should drop the scale down a bit let's pump the detail all the way up roughness i'd say about here don't want it to be too rough. Want to get some of that sort of gassy look to come through. Now, that's looking cool, but how can we make everything pop a bit more? We need to, we basically just need to give it a bit more contrast and sort of accentuate these gas clusters, if it makes sense. So we can do this by essentially doing a similar thing, but to the strength parameter. The strength of the emission is sort of the strength of the light that's punching through. At the moment, we're just having sort of a constant light which is this this factor here so what we're going to do is add a math node so hit shift a converter add a math node and we're just going to pop this in between the color ramp and we're going to multiply this by another noise texture so shift d on this color ramp pop this here we're going to plug this noise texture into that color ramp and we're going to plug this color ramp in to this math node here but at the moment, we're just adding the two on top of each other. We actually want to multiply them together so that the so the blacks sort of stay black, if that makes sense. So we're going to change that to multiply. As you start to crunch this in, you can sort of get a bit more definition. And this is going to control your brightness here of the emission. So this white slider is going to bring more brightness, but this is going to sort of contrast the colors on the noise texture. But I just want to give it... A little bit more control so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another one of these multiply nodes hit shift d on this one so we just copy it over we'll plug that into there and that, now this is going to get allow us to just have a bit more control over the emission of the nebula so we can pump that up just to whatever you want you don't want it too bright but we're going to keep playing around with this this is just going to be a lot of eyeballing and sort of guessing bring this in you can really see it's starting to pop a bit more now already but before i start playing with these colors i'm just going to change a few settings on my color management so where we changed our um render engine go down all the way to the bottom you'll see this color management pop up sort of drop down box change the look here to very high contrast it's going to make the colors pop a lot more you can play around with the exposure as well i wouldn't crank it too high maybe like 0.1 and you can drop the gamma down a bit as I think maybe like 0.6 and now we can start playing around with these colors so i'm going to give this one sort of purple yeah just sort of experiment with it really 
You don't need to copy exactly what I'm doing. Just sort of do your own experimenting. Let's get rid of these overlays here as well. So we can sort of get a more accurate look on what it's going to look like. If things are looking a bit too bright, you can bring that multiply down, darken your nebulas a bit more. Just use this as sort of a control point along with this white value as well and the black as well. So the higher you have your black, the more sort of volume you're giving. But I think I don't think you want it too strong. I think maybe something like that. But yeah, just play around with yours. Like you don't need to just copy mine. So when that's done, now all you got to do, just find a spot within this sphere. Just hit Control Alt Zero. Oh, sorry. You need to you need to add a camera first because we deleted the camera earlier. Hit Shift A. Yeah, just add a camera, find a spot you like within the sphere and hit Control alt 0 and that's going to set the camera in the location that you are in your viewport. Now just widen that focal length. We're going to bring it really, really wide. So like six millimeters, I think is good. But back to your, uh, your nebula sphere or whatever. All we need to do to animate this is click on that other noise texture, that noise texture here. Just hit Control t again. So you add that mapping node and texture coordinate. To get that infinite loop, you just got to rotate one of these parameters. Now we're going to play around with this till we get one we like. See, that's good on the Y. Looks like you're passing through it. So we're going to use that one. But you can do any one you want. It depends on where your camera is, really. But in this case, it looks good on the Y. So we're going to do that. Now I want it to pass through. Add a keyframe on the Y. So insert keyframe on the first frame. I'm going to go all the way to the right. So hold shift, hit right arrow then right arrow again so you go to 301 and we're going to insert another keyframe actually sorry we need to change the y to minus 360 hit i to insert another keyframe now click on your mapping coordinate you should be able to see your keyframes here just bring the timeline up with your mouse hovered in the timeline hit a and then t set the interpolation to linear and that's gonna give you a, a animation that constantly goes through this sort of nebula cloud and that's literally all there is to it now you guys can play around a bit more with these settings these don't have to be final you can have it a bit more like that if you want i'll just play around with these parameters so you can get something that looks decent remember you can play around with the uh color management here as well you can play around with the exposure settings and gamma settings i think i'm going to change that to sort of green I don't know, man. I can't really decide. I think I'll go with that. Oh, man. The choices. <laughs> and then if you want, you can add a simple HDRI to the scene. If you want to add like a space background, just go to Google, type in space HDRIs. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to find some. But there's already some here. Just download those and you can bring them into your world settings by changing this uh, to an environment texture you plug that into the backgrounds and then you load up the hri here uh, you just locate it wherever you downloaded that hri i've got a, an add-on which i use uh, called pro lighting skies it's got basically loads of hris already installed for you i did pay for it but i think it's really handy you don't need to buy it it's up to you but you can use that as well just to add a bit more a bit more uh depth to your scene or alternatively you could just add a plane scale it up Whichever way your camera is facing, in this case, it's along the x-axis. So you could just basically add space. You could basically put a space texture on that plane and use that instead. But I'm not going to do that because I've already got this thing set up. But that's another way you could do it to create that sort of background effect. But it's a lot easier just to load up a HDRI. There's plenty of uh, free ones online that you can find. I just like to use that add-on because it saves me a lot of time. That's pretty much it done there. So all you got to do... It's just render out the animation. I'm just going to render out a frame just so you can see what it looks like. So yeah, like I said, we're using cycles, so it might take a bit longer to render out. I'll show you what it looks like in Eevee if you want to see it, but it won't look as good. It's just not as good as it. It will render faster though, but look at that. That looks terrible. <laughs> I think that's probably... Oh, mate, I don't know. It's probably because I use a sphere. I don't know, but yeah. You're going to want to use cycles. It's just much better for this kind of stuff. But yeah, all you got to do now to render out the animation is go to output properties, save it somewhere you can find it. I advise against putting it in the TMP folder. Change the file format to FFmpeg video. 
really you should export them as image sequences that's probably the best way to do it but i'm gonna just do it as a as a video just because it's a bit quicker change encoding to mp4 output quality you want that set to perceptually lossless and then all we've got to do is go to render render animation and you're done all right guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the tutorial uh, if you did please leave a like and subscribe as it helps me grow the youtube channel and if you do find value in my content i do encourage you to consider supporting me on patreon uh, where you'll find loads of other exclusive benefits also feel free to join my discord uh, server i know everyone's got one these days but um, i'm trying to build a community with this uh, so if you want to join and just discuss some blender related stuff or just share your artwork feel free to join there and don't forget to check out my website that's nebmotion.co.uk